Hello world, it's your main man Uncle Hodge here. Today we have a gloriously clickbaity video for you. We're doing five top accuracy tips for your FX crown or FX impact. One weird trick for a flat stomach is coming up next week. Spoiler alert, it's exercise. Tip number one, clean your barrel. When you receive your FX from uh, the factory, there is often a small amount of what is either a polishing compound, a lapping compound, or maybe some sort of uh, rust preventative grease that is inside the barrel sleeve. So pull out that barrel sleeve, put a little bit of solvent in there, maybe use some jib or some carby cleaner or something, and then you're just gonna wanna pull tight patches through it until they come back clean. Now you wanna make sure that you get all of that grease out of there because that is a variable basically that you can't control so um, it will change your point of impact if you leave any of that stuff in there. Now once you've got all that junk out of your barrel it may take a little bit for it to settle in so you might end up shooting 20 shots that seem to be a little bit inconsistent or thereabouts they might be more might be less um, but basically once you have a little bit of lead fouling back in that barrel, uh, after you've removed that grease, uh, your accuracy will stabilize after that uh, and normalize. But at one point in time or another, there's a good chance that your accuracy will start degrading again. So when you see your accuracy start to degrade again, your groups are getting bigger. Pull your barrel through again, clean all that lead fouling out, and then go ahead and shoot a few more fouling rounds. Uh, to normalize your accuracy once again because you will experience the same thing with that clean barrel uh, and then your accuracy should be back to normal. Personally, I tend to get about a whole tin, maybe a tin and a half of pellets, so that's nearly 500 pellets through a barrel before I start experiencing any accuracy loss. Your mileage may vary. Always remember, keep wiping till she comes back clean. Tip number two, tune your gun. You need to perfect the relationship between the regulator pressure and your hammer spring tension. I will link a video up here. Click on that, watch that, read all of the articles that I've linked in the uh, description of that video and it should get you to where you want to be when it comes to tuning. Um, you need to tune your rifle for whatever type of ammunition you're using. Um, and you'll, once you've done that, you'll, you'll be a great step further forwards than where you were before if you were using anything other than the recommended ammunition for that particular barrel sleeve. Further to that, you can uh, tune your magazine as well. So you can pull your magazine apart very carefully, mind you, and on a place where you're not going to lose any of the bits because it is spring-loaded. Um, but the spring is a rotational spring that makes the magazine rotate as you push the action forward and remove a pellet from the magazine, the magazine rotates. And the spring that makes that magazine rotate uh, often comes with a little bit too much tension on it. So you can take it apart and then put it back together with less rotations on that rotational spring. Uh, and this in turn will give you less pressure on the pellet probe as the pellet probe seats and pushes that pellet forwards. Um, the spring tension on that pellet probe changes each time. It's a little bit less with each shot. So to get more consistency, you can either single shoot, i.e. don't use the magazine at all, or you can tune your magazine and minimize the effect of that rotational energy on your pellet probe. Tip number three, getting good optics. You need to have a scope that is not only of reasonable to good quality, but it also needs to have the features that you actually want it to have for an air gun. I have some fairly nice scopes in my safe on some of my higher end rifles that I would love to put on my crown, but the parallax adjustment does not go low enough. So I have a Burris XDR2 on my 308, and that is a wonderful scope. It has uh, a mill hash reticle, it has the mill turrets on it, it is just a thing of beauty. It is crystal clear and I love it to bits, but I can't really use it on my crown because the parallax doesn't go below 50 yards. So you look down the scope and you check for parallax error when you're shooting up nice and close and you can see the crosshairs wibbly wobbling all over the place. So I have an Optizan uh, 6-24 first focal plane scope on mine 
uh, and it has a reasonably good clarity of glass. It's nothing compared to the Burris XDR series or loopholes or night forces or whatever else you might come across, but it's more useful because the parallax um, is adjustable to the ranges that you're going to want to use it at. So my top tip with regards to optics is make sure you have good quality optics that have the right features for what you actually want to do with it. Just spending more money on guns uh, will not help you here. You need to get the right scope for the right rifle and also keep an eye on your mounts. Um, over time, sometimes if you don't use Loctite, um, if you do use Loctite, mind you, make sure you use blue Loctite, not red Loctite. You don't need to put red Loctite on anything on your gun as far as I'm concerned. Blue will be fine and it will be removable if you need to without breaking anything. But keep an eye on those mounts, make sure they're always nice and tight. Um, if you have a torque spec that comes with your mounts, uh, whack your old torque wrench on there and make sure they're torqued up before you go out because I, in the past, have had heavy caliber rifles go awry on me where my scope and everything was all sweet, but I pulled the trigger, had the shot, and the scope would jump ever so slightly to the left. And then I would pull the trigger again, and the scope would jump ever so slightly to the right, and I'd end up with two very small groups on this piece of paper that were separated by about an inch. So, lesson learned. Tighten up your mounts and keep an eye on them. Something to check before we go to the range. Tip number four, understanding elevation, trajectory, and windage. Um, there seems to be a fairly unreasonable expectation out amongst most air gunners for what they expect out of their air guns. And I just want to give you an idea that without understanding your windage and trajectory, you might be unhappy with your groups, especially if you're shooting outside. To put this into perspective, with, with my tune on my FX Crown, it's a 25 caliber and I'm shooting JSB King Heavy Mark IIs uh, at about 870 feet per second, so that's quite a pokey little tune. Um, and it's, it's a pellet with a reasonably good ballistic coefficient for a Diablo pellet. Now that pellet is affected by wind still quite a lot. So at 50 meters with a five kilometer an hour wind, that's three miles an hour for those of you playing in freedom units. The windage that you need to use for that particular circumstance is half a mil. That is one and a half MOA. So your pellet is being blown off course one and a half MOA in a three mile an hour wind. That's not much at all. That's not a great deal of wind at all. It's just a light breeze and it is blowing your pellet off one and a half MOA. That's a considerable amount of of movement over such a short distance so it's imperative that you learn to read the wind. So if you're getting bigger groups at 50 meters and you're noticing that there's wind about there's a good chance that's why your groups are getting bigger. It's not because your rifle isn't performing properly, it's not because you're doing anything wrong, it's just because the wind is blowing your pellet around and you need to learn to read the wind very well if you want to shoot an air gun at longer range. Aside from that, the only way around that really is to start using slugs and slugs aren't available in many places around the world at the moment. So I suggest for those of you that are using pellets that you buy a good wind meter, get a good range finder, use a ballistic app like Strelop Pro or something like that. That's the one that I use, that's the one that I like. I'll put a video up here on showing you how to use it um, and what's entailed inside that program. Um, but yeah, you need, you need to understand just how much elevation change happens when you're shooting a subsonic round and just how much it really does get blown around by the wind. Learn to read the wind, learn to shoot in the wind, it's fun practicing. But if you don't, your, uh, your groups are going to suffer. Tip number five, ammunition selection. There's no point in buying an expensive gun and buying trash ammunition to feed it. You need to either use what uh, FX recommends or buy a whole bunch of different types of ammo and try them. So you may find one that works better than others typically um, and usually for FX guns that's going to be the ones they recommend. Um, you can tune your gun um, as I mentioned before for different types of ammo but the I, I would highly recommend just sticking with JSBs if they work for you. Um, and further to that you can sort your pellets uh, by weight and also by skirt diameter and 
there's a whole bunch of tools that you can purchase. It's a really fun thing to nerd out on. If you have an afternoon to spare, you can tip a tin out and sort them all by weight, sort them all by skirt size, sort them all by how pretty they look. Um, but sorting your ammunition will bring a new level of consistency to your groups. Um, and within that category of consistency, I would suggest lubing your pellets as well with a, a reputable pellet lube. I will link another video up in here. Watch that one. That'll be uh, Tomcat's, Tomcat Air Guns' Zzzz video series on how to sort pellets. He did an excellent job presenting those videos and I would like to refer you to him because his level of expertise is above mine. So there you have it. Five quick tips. Well, not necessarily quick, but a quick video. Five quick tips for you to improve the accuracy on your FX Crown or Impact. If you are having any troubles with any of these, drop a comment below and I will do my best to get back to you. If you like the video, smash that like button and subscribe. Check out the Patreon if you're interested in that. Drop me a dollar for some more ammo beer and new camera gear and we'll keep the videos coming. Thanks for watching.